There are nearly 150,000 Iraqi and Afghanis like Haitham Jassim who risked their lives as translators and interpreters for the U.S. Armed Forces. But the U.S. has admitted fewer than 1,500 of them on special immigration visas, known as SIVs, intended to allow them to rebuild their lives in the United States. The U.S. Office of Refugee Resettlement, the primary agency in charge of helping SIVs, has promised more than it can deliver. On its website, ORR states the following. With U.S. total unemployment at 9.5 percent in June and significantly greater unemployment in states where SIVs typically settle, like California and Michigan, there are few options for families like the Jassims who expected to find jobs in law and engineering. Mike Scribner is the president of BCCI Construction Company in San Francisco. In better times, his business would have been in a position to hire Iraqi engineers as construction managers. Unfortunately, you know, you're at the, one of the worst economic times we've ever seen in our lives, and the opportunities just aren't there right now. Well, my personal opinion is that we do owe them. I mean, if they're working on behalf of the United States government and the causes of the United States government, I believe it's, it's important for us to support them. The passage in 2008 of the Refugee Crisis in Iraq Act, introduced by Senator Ted Kennedy and Senator Gordon Smith, authorized 5,000 special immigrant visas to be issued annually between 2008 and 2012. That could open the doors to 25,000 SIVs in the next five years and their families. Even jobs that are typically available to new immigrants are impossible to get. Under these circumstances, does it make any sense to bring SIVs home to the U.S. when they will have no way to support themselves? Not everyone believes we're doing the former translators or our country a favor by bringing them into the U.S. Ann Corcoran, a political conservative in Western Maryland, tries to be the voice of reason in her blog, Refugee Resettlement Watch. Somebody abroad is telling them that they're going to come to America and have this fabulous life. Somebody is, somebody is misleading them. Ellen Dumanil directs Economic Development Services at Catholic Charities, one of the voluntary agencies that resettle refugees in Northern California. We could be doing and should be doing a much better job of letting people know the realities on the ground once they get here. What we are seeing right now with refugees People are getting off the plane and they're really scared. Um, they've, they, they know that the economy is in a shambles. They're afraid that they're not going to be able to find work. We're seeing that more and more. The, the reality is people, though, are going to decide to come here because they're running for their lives. So the decision isn't about, well, is this going to be a, a better life for me? It's, am I going to be able to stay here and, and uh, not be killed? What should be happening is that if we have some responsibility to um, the Iraqis who have run for their lives, that we should be putting more money and care into taking care of them in the region until they can go home safely. And we should have building programs in Iraq. And if people need to come back and live in communities that are gated for a while, like the doctors or the engineers or whatever, live in gated communities and be protected, they should be. But in the meantime, we do probably owe them something in the countries that they would wait in to be returned to Iraq. But I don't, I don't know how Iraq pulls out of this if the doctors are over here scrubbing the floors in a hospital. Lisa Vogel, whose leasing and property management company is also feeling the pinch, cannot imagine leaving these loyal U.S. supporters behind. It's gut-wrenching to think that, you know, they support us, whether it was by choice or not by choice, they did it. And that they come here and they're, you know, discriminated against, persecuted. I mean, it's better than, I guess, where we're being at home because they'd be f fearful for their life. But here, there's, they're fearful emotionally. I mean, it's got to be a very traumatic, unwelcoming, unsympathetic place to come to. You know, you're no different than people living on the streets. It's horrific. And, and we're, we're human beings. We're Americans. And we should, we should, be, we should know better. We treat people better. What I think troubles me so much is just the waste of human capital. 
you've got these brilliant, talented people coming over here with law degrees, medical degrees, then them with any kind of luck at all, or working as technicians at you know local hospitals, which is better than working at 7-Eleven, but it's not where they should be. You want people to start their lives here immediately. They've already been sitting around waiting and waiting. And so once they get here, the notion that they're going to wait and wait more makes no sense. We could put something in place. It wouldn't take a lot. I don't think it would take a lot to figure out how to do that. I, I think you could give me another five minutes and I could figure it out. I was actually surprised that they don't come here with a job or an opportunity, whether it's within the military or some of the large uh, defense companies. It would seem to me that they could put them into some position, whether it's within project management or their area of expertise. I, you don't want to bring them in and set them up for failure. You need to set them up for success and give them the tools to be successful, as opposed to just bringing them over and saying, okay, here, you know, have at it. These are people that are making huge contributions and giving back. So the little bit that we do to help people get a start, this is, this is a, I think, this is what regenerates this country, frankly. That's my belief. So that very little bit, the very, very little bit that we do, we should be doing more. And we should not be questioning whether or not it's the right thing to do, because it is. As Americans, it is in our own best interest that the SIVs can spread the word at home and around the world that the American system does indeed work, not that it left them high and dry.